Hello and welcome to Commons Current Event Roundtable. Today we have two wonderful guests. One of our guests has been on our show before and we got to welcome back John Cartland, our engineer. Hi John, I'm shaking hands. Good to, <laughs> good, to, good to have you here once again and get some of your good interpretations and uh, like we always have and another one of our guests a new guest today is richard zanzo who is also an engineer welcome dick Hi, i'm going to call you. you dick because i know Hi. you like the name better than than richard and today we <clears throat> have a different kind of show we have a show on global warming slash climate control climate change i should say or is it climate control but i'd like to read you something and i want you to hear this because i think this is very important the arctic ocean is warming up icebergs are growing scarcer and in some places the seals are finding the water too hot reports all point to a radical change in climate conditions and here are two unheard of temperatures in the arctic zone Expeditions report that scarcely any ice has been met with as much as far north as 81 degrees 29 minutes. Great masses of ice has been replaced by moraines of earth and stones, while at many points well-known glaciers have entirely disappeared. Does it sound like something that was from today? No. This is U.S. Weather Bureau 1922. I was shocked when I heard this, and everybody says that the glaciers are melting, the, we're getting warmer and hotter, and pretty soon our, our, our polar bears are going to disappear, our seals are going to disappear, and what is, what is going on? 1922, I'd like to talk to both of you. Um, you are two men that have, are seeing our science in a different aspect and I'd like to talk to you about it. First we'll hear from uh, either one of you, Richard or John, chime in what is really going on and why are you here today? Besides me asking you to come on well, the show. We're talking about uh, uh, potential climate change and what have you. Okay. And uh, uh, this has been a hobby of mine for a number of years and uh, I, I would say uh, I would be qualified to, uh, as a skeptic on what the claims of uh, the so-called uh, uh, people that are uh, uh, advertising this global warming uh, problem. Uh, I'm skeptic. There's, got, there's a couple of, I just want to hit a couple of bullet points on that. Okay. Uh, about a thousand years ago, uh, 10th century, for a period of four to five hundred years, we went through the, the globe went through a period called uh, the medieval warm-up. Mm -hmm. wherein the uh, 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 the world was one and a half to two degrees Celsius warmer than it is today and we have no scientific we don't have any scientific uh, reasons for why it did warm up for four or five hundred years now following that four or five hundred years we went into the little ice age which lasted about three hundred years what have you and we have no scientific reason or basis for that little ice age to have. And there was we no fossil fuels at and the we time. Didn't, and we were not burning fossil fuels right. uh, to any significant degree back there. No CO2 builds up and so forth. And uh, uh, so the, uh, when, when scientists are asked why that happened, we just don't know. We also had a, uh, a global yeah, cooling. But, yeah, but, just let me finish. But uh, John, mm -hmm. but somebody else did know. Al Gore knew in his Inconvenient Truth, he did know all the facts because he got it from the scientists. How did, how did that happen? Well, uh, maybe, I, I know Dick has been uh, uh, working the numbers. Uh, and it, perhaps you, you might uh, in, enjoy answering that question, Dick. That seems to be more up to your Yeah, and then we'll go back to the medieval times. But right. I think, you know, like you said, we didn't know. But somehow he got his message from other scientists. Yeah. How, you know, how do you, I mean, how has it been unproven or proven or What's going on with this? Okay, it started out by the United Nations setting up an intergovernmental panel on climate change. Okay. And this was uh, started in the 1980s, and they got scientists from all around the world to study climate and to see whether man has affected the climate by the introduction of carbon dioxide. And that's called anthropogenic, man-made uh, carbon dioxide. And uh, 
based on the work that was done there, Al Gore uh, used a lot of the information that was developed by this committee, this panel, and came up with the movie The Inconvenient Truth. So a lot of the information he got was from these... Uh, uh, this group of... Uh, uh, panel. Uh, panel and their reports. Right. And the, the panel puts out a scientific report. They also put out a report for, the, for executives, mm -hmm. executive summary. And the executive summary presumably summarizes in precise detail what the scientists have said. But close examination shows that uh, things in the executive report don't necessarily add up to what is said in the scientific report. And that's where a lot of the discussion has come in relative to climate change. And that's how you two guys are yeah. thinking, because you, both of you, are looking more, being engineers, yeah. you're inquisitive. Because I know, right. I've well, known you, John, yeah, you're very yeah. inquisitive, and somehow, this information didn't sit right to you? Well, what was, what well was here's it? another point. I brought another uh, a chart along here that uh, I don't think we can show on the camera, but it, it's pretty simple. Uh, when they, the whole notion here is that uh, CO2 builds up and then temperatures, uh, because of the increased greenhouse effect, the additional CO2 temperatures then in the globe build up. Whereas in the last 400,000 years, that's about four ice ages. Ice ages come every about every right. 100,000 years. You have about 80, 85,000 years of ice and you have 15 to 20,000 years of warming. The last 400,000 years, temperature buildups in the globe, in the world, have preceded CO2 buildups. And so it looks like historically, for some reason, there's a, a, a warming of the earth and then following that by one or 200,000 years, we have a CO2 buildup. And so it seems to be the argument that CO2 is causing this temperature buildup is, is backwards. Historically, it's uh, gone the other way. That's so CO2, it, uh, those are fossil fuels, CO2, or so what? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, so the ones that he's talking yeah, about uh, are natural CO2. Okay, right. that's natural. Right. Yeah, natural, okay. from the oceans, from the earth. And now they're reporting, now the, the greenhouse effect, is that the, called the greenhouse effect? Yes. Okay, because we're listening to a lot of new terminology. In fact, pretty soon we need a new dictionary with all the iPads and iTouches and all, you know, uh, the, new, the new words that uh, are been coined lately. Uh, the greenhouse effect, I'm sure, is is, I mean, an old word, but we, it's a new interpretation of the greenhouse effect as far as people have never heard of this before. And this is CO2, exactly. Well, the CO2, the, maybe you can talk a little bit. Yeah, let me, let me talk about that a little bit. Because so people, our audience, well, yeah. can understand a little bit yeah. about what really is going on. Because before it was global warming, now we're changing it to climate change, and we're talking about C CO2s, right. and we're talking about fossil fuels, and we're talking about hydrogen. We'll be talking about coal. There's so much to be talked about, right. and I, you know, I'm trying to put it all together. Right. Let me summarize real quickly. Uh, the greenhouse effect is caused by primarily by two things that have been identified so far. One is carbon dioxide, and carbon dioxide is natural; it's a natural source. Mm -hmm. And the other is water vapor. Okay. There are two main things that happen, and the greenhouse effect is energy from the sun penetrates our atmosphere, warms the earth and then the warmed Earth radiates warmth back out into space, and it's trapped by water vapor and by carbon dioxide. That's its greenhouse effect. Okay. Now, that varies, of course, over time, but in the case of water vapor, and this is an important issue, and water vapor is the largest greenhouse gas. It's carbon dioxide is a relatively minor greenhouse gas, but water vapor is the largest, and these sun has two effects. One is it penetrates the water vapor, goes to the earth, warms the earth, and gets the greenhouse effect. But in the case of water vapor, when you get a lot of water vapor, since the earth is co covered 70% with water,